Hello everyone, Matt here with TheVirtualInstructor.com and in this video I'd like to share with you excerpts from four recorded live lessons of a recent live lesson series that we completed on pen and ink drawing featuring a botanical subject. To learn more about how you can access this complete video series as well as the rest of our recorded live lessons, video courses, weekly critiques as part of the Members Minute, and our lesson plans, just visit TheVirtualInstructor.com forward slash members today. Now I hope you enjoy the following excerpts. I want to leave enough negative space up here at the top. So I'm just going to start with my first ellipse, uh, kind of more of a circular shape. And I'm looking at the outer bands of the flower. And these marks are going to be very light. I'm not going to press down really hard just so they can be seen here in the video. Um, but I am going to make them very light. We'll refine them as we go. Now, the second sunflower, of course, overlaps the first slightly. So I'm going to create that down here. And then our next ellipse, and you'll notice I'm drawing very loosely with mostly my entire arm here. So drawing quickly and loosely, it's important to be loose in the early stage. All right, so what I'm doing here with the petals is I've, since I've got uh, these circular shapes in place, I can just start going around the outside of them and uh, just keep going around, and, you know, making comparisons as I go. It really is, during the course of a drawing or a painting, it really is like you're, you're learning your subject. All right, so there's a there's a space right here. This is one of those areas where I'm talking about looking at the negative space. So this petal, this stem, and this petal, and this little piece coming out, which is a little bit different than the reference, all create a shape right here, this negative shape in here. And there's another petal that comes out here. And another one we'll add right there. And I want to try to get that shape as close to what we're seeing in the reference as possible. I can start pulling lines that are closer to the pattern that I see here. So the directional strokes are kind of changing. It seems like these, this next section here is a little bit more linear. All right. For the most part, I want the contrast of value to determine the edges of the flowers. But in a pen and ink drawing, that's not always possible. Sometimes you just have to define the edges. So I'm going to go ahead and define this petal here since it is... close to where we're working down here. And perhaps you've noticed all three of the sunflowers have a little bit of variation in what's happening in the center portion of the flower. This flower seems like it's kind of maybe overall a middle value. Uh, if we kind of just simplify what we're looking at. Where the, the flower over here... Um, which is off camera view right now, but that is definitely a darker one. So we'll need to make sure that we make the values darker in this one. Okay, now that we've got some of the textures around the outside, uh, we can go back in and make the center portion a little bit darker. And uh, this is real simple. I'm just going to go in and make small circular strokes, just like I've done around the outside. There's lots of overlapping that's happening here. And I'm trying to make sure that we've got a good, uh, good indication of contrast here that differentiates each petal. Before we keep working even further over, we'll go ahead and do the petals underneath. Again, every time we're enhancing the outline or the outer line of the petal, I'm trying to stay on the right side of that petal. So every time I'm making the line a little bit thicker, for the most part, it's on the right side. Uh, here's, a, here's a case where we can put a little bit of a thicker line underneath the petal. But again, thinking about the light source originating from the upper left-hand corner. And then that's going to produce a slight shadow on the opposite side of that. Now, in the reference, this large one that I'm doing here is not quite as large. But 
we'll make it a little bit larger, exaggerate it a little bit. And you can see there's kind of a light line that goes right down through the middle, and there's light around the edge here too before it gets dark again. So let's go ahead and draw that next little piece next to it. So we'll try to capture that lighter line that goes right down the middle here. So I'm going to start by just basically deciding where it's going to be. And then we'll go right in with our directional strokes here. All right, continuing to make smaller circles as I'm working out. I, I'm not going to uh, sugarcoat things here around the outer edge of the center portion. This, The patterning out here is a little bit tricky because we have kind of a gray value right here, and then we have these lighter circles, and then we have a little bit of these shadows coming out behind some of the circles. So I'm basically continuing to make circles and just varying the concentration of those circles and then I'm going to go back and add some of those darker bits of value in just a minute. And remember, we understand things and see things in the or we we understand things around us in the world based on relationships of what we see around them. It's all about context. And the same is true when you're creating a drawing like this, uh, where you're basically having to reduce what you're seeing into basic lines. So if we just saw that part on its own, let's say you started this drawing in this area and that's all you saw, you might say, hey, wait a minute, that doesn't make sense. <laughs> and if you don't continue um, and add the petals and things so you can see everything in, together, in, in totality and see everything together, you, you might quit. You might be encouraged to quit. Uh, so you can't do that. But I think some folks, a lot of times they start a drawing, they're on the right track. They're uh, evaluating what they're seeing and translating it into their drawing exceptionally well. But they just don't have enough information on the surface yet to, to have that comparison that we need to have in place in order to understand what it is we're looking at. Some of these flowers, there's not a whole lot of information as far as the directional strokes go, but I'm sure you can probably make an educated guess as to what direction you should make those strokes. Um, you might leave some of them completely strokeless <laughs> um, and see if that works. Remember, you can always come back and make additional marks if need be. We need to be doing things that challenge us. And when we do things that challenge us and we succeed at them, those are the things that we're most proud of. If you think about your most proud accomplishments in life, there are probably things that were hard or difficult at some point, or they were time consuming. They're things that not everybody can do. And if we look closely at this one, um, this one definitely has a lot more vertical strokes in it. So I'm going to start over here and create more vertical strokes. It's amazing how these are all sunflowers. We might get a little bit more circular as we get close to the center. But they all have really completely different, not completely different, but different patterns on the inside, or we're addressing them with different patterns, but they still... They still should look like they're all sunflower seed or sunflower sunflowers, period. <laughs> okay, so this doesn't look anything like the leaf yet, but now we're going to go ahead and fill it in. Now, the leaf kind of extends outward this way and then downward. Uh, so that's kind of how I'm going to make my directional strokes, I believe. Actually, now I'm going to make my directional strokes flow out towards the outer edge of the leaf. And just so you know, this is kind of how I'm interpreting this as far as line goes. So basically interpreting this leaf with line. And everybody's going to have a different way that they interpret it with pen and ink. All right, I know that this section is relatively light in the reference, but I'm going to go ahead and add a little bit of shadow over here. Again, with just a few vertical marks, and we'll add a little bit of shadow underneath this part of the stem, too. Again, with marks, lines that just kind of flow around the form. We can go back and make the line quality a little bit thicker on this side. That's the opposite.
from the light source. And there is a lighter line that goes right down the middle, a lighter vein. Okay, we'll start back here where the value is the darkest or darker. And again, pull strokes kind of around the form of the leaf. Okay, so I changed the directional strokes on this one. Again, just to kind of mimic what I was seeing on that particular leaf, I'm going to go back and make this these values a little bit darker than what they are in the reference, just to kind of make this leaf feel like it's a little bit further in front of the viewer. And maybe somebody noticed that I did create a, uh, a stroke that flowed with the contours, the cross contours this way first, and then changed my mind and went the other direction. Um, so I'm going to kind of cover that up a little bit. All right. So I, I think that my decision to make the lines curve around the form this way is panning out pretty well. I really feel like we can feel the form. We can add a little bit more to it um, by making a few more lines in here and making the values just slightly darker. And that will make the leaf feel a little bit more like it goes down in towards the middle, towards that center vein. Now I know in the reference that this whole stem is pretty light in value, but we've got a pretty consistent light source coming from this direction. So it's not gonna hurt to play up a little bit more of the shadow there on the right side. The last thing to do is to erase the pencil lines. And I kind of make it a rule of uh, mine when I'm working with pen and ink to wait at least 10 minutes before I do any erasing. I think most of the ink is dry, but I know up here it's definitely dry. We haven't made any marks up here. So I'm just going to take the kneaded eraser here and I'm just going to gently go over the top of the drawing. Now it might not seem like this is necessary, um, especially if you're watching this, you know, <laughs> especially since you're watching this on video um, and you might miss out on some of those very faint but still there, pencil lines. But erasing this, these pencil lines that are left make a huge difference in the final drawing. If you enjoyed this video, then I know that you'll enjoy being a member at thevirtualinstructor.com. Our comprehensive membership program includes video courses on drawing and painting, weekly live lessons, eBooks, lesson plans for teachers, weekly critiques, and much, much more. To learn more about our program, just visit thevirtualinstructor.com forward slash members or click on the card in the upper right hand corner. And if you want to check out three of our course modules for free, you can do so. Just click on the link on your screen now. And if you're watching this on YouTube, make sure that you subscribe to the channel. I look forward to seeing you in the next video.